I think more chose me because it was the depression and the schools, unless you could get a scholarship, you really couldn't afford to go to art school. So I did get a scholarship, a four-year scholarship from the Board of Education because some of the uh, officials of the Board of Education already knew my work. They would have Saturday classes at the uh, Fleischer Institute. And those Saturday classes were lovely. They, the group would go out to Fairmount Park and then come back and meet in the Fleischer Museum that was then and show their work, and you would might get three brushes as a prize, or a little paint box, or something, a small thing. But it was good to see her work along others. There were some very good professors. There was uh, Professor Snell, and he was the one who stood behind me. They came in with a like a surgical white jacket, no dirty clothes, no paint smeared, anything. They were immaculate. And he had a mole stick, which is a law. You never touch, you never touch a student's work. If you wanted to point something out, use a stick. At the end of the stick, you would point out what, what it was. And he stood behind me one day and he said, well, my dear, he said, I think you're going to be a portrait artist, which stunned me. I had no idea. Well, there was a watercolor painter named Gill, who was the first one that influenced me because his signature in a painting was to leave as much white space as possible, say as little as necessary, and he did watercolors. And just with four strokes, he could create a whole scene. And, and that was the first time I realized the importance of we say less is more. While I was in my last year, I got a, a job at night in a little printer's shop because they were introducing offset printing. And I saw an ad in the newspaper that said, we need somebody to come who can do artwork, who can do drawings, and do paste-ups. In those days, you, you pasted it up, they photographed it, and ran it through cylinders. That was offset. So I did get a job after school. That was my first job. And then after that, I decided, since my studio in Philly was on Washington Square, I was 10 minutes away from Curtis Publishing. In those days, you could walk in and see an art director. You didn't have to make an appointment six weeks ahead. And there was one day a week where, um, at Curtis Publishing, Saturday Evening Post opened their doors. and. This very pleasant man would come out who was the art direct art uh, editor, and he would invite you to come in, and you would show them little ideas for covers. They were actually bought ideas for Norman Rockwell and the others. Rockwell didn't always think of his own idea for a cover. So if you had a bright idea, you just sketched it out, brought it in on sheets of paper. So I began doing that, and they bought one. He said, now look, Miriam, we bought a number of your ideas. Would you like to try to do this yourself? Do a finished cover. Let's see how it turns out. So it's a horrifying experience. I think I lost 20 pounds that week. <laughs> and I finally did. They bought it. Once those covers appeared on the post, I got a call from people who were agents. And they said, look, come to New York. We can get you all the work you want. So I packed up and left for New York. And that's where I arrived in 1944. It's very simple. I mean, first you have to stop talking and let them talk. And then you have to observe them and have them walk around. Not sitting, they have to move because each person is individual and moves in different ways. And then once they're they're relaxed, and you can be in exchange ideas and talk, find out more about them, and um, then it's easier. After that, what I do is that I make, I make very quick pencil sketches. It's like a shorthand. That reminds me of what I see. But to make sure, since 
people forget, and I forget, I'll take a camera and take details. I may take a photograph of your shoes, or I may take a photograph of your fingers, so that I can study them later to see what I haven't, what I left out in the sketch. Well, that's enough. Just with those two things, the sketches and maybe backup photos, is really enough. And then you go back to your studio, you pull down the blinds, you don't answer the phone, and you begin to make drawings one after another. You may do five or six, just different variations of the same thing. That's, that's the way I work. I was at a meeting at the Society of Illustrators. It was a general meeting. And before it was over, a man was introduced. I didn't get his name. When he went to the, got up on the stage and he said, we have a problem in Korea and we think that maybe you people can help us. He said, we have a war in Korea now with, with the Chinese. And he said, these are American boys, and they've been there now for over a year. And where they are is in the mountainous region of Korea. We can't fly in the big Bob Hope shows. So nobody has come to see them. And we thought that maybe we could get a group of artists, because you travel light. All you need are a bunch of pencils and a, and a portfolio of paper. And we can, we can fly you in anywhere. So I thought, ah, what a great idea. Yes, I'll do it. I volunteered with a group of illustrators. There were eight of us. Now, they would post a notice saying, um, Thursday, we're getting some artists. And if you want your portrait done, just sign your name here, or they'll show up. And I'll show you photographs in line, dozens of them. And they would all have their hair slicked back and their clothes pressed, and they wanted to have their portraits done. It was wonderful, like being in art school, where you have endless models, one after another. The, draw the original drawing was sent to their family. The USO took care of that. And I would get letters back from the family thanking me. The Portrait Gallery in Washington has now, I think, about 17. And the last one, I think, was Al Hirschfeld. I was one of those fortunate, fortunate, just absolutely fortunate that I learned to use my hands and that I could draw. And it wasn't until years later that I realized what I did learn there. <laughs>